Welcome, here we go. So I have cosecant of theta equals four. And I also have a constraint of where the cotangent of theta is less than zero. And what we need to do is we need to evaluate all six trigonometric functions. So the first thing I need to do is cosecant of theta equals four. Well, I need to create a triangle, right? It's either my, to evaluate for theta, I either need to use the unit circle, I need to use a triangle to evaluate my six trigonometric functions. Now I know the cosecant of theta is um, equal or it's the reciprocal of sine. Now, a lot of times I like to put things back into terms of sine because I'm a little bit more familiar with sine than I am always with cosecant. So the sine of theta, if cosecant of theta equals 4, that means the sine of theta is going to equal 1 over 4, meaning the opposite side of a triangle would be 1, and the hypotenuse is going to be 4. Now, the thing is, this triangle needs to be in the constraint where cotangent theta is less than 0. Now, in a couple other videos, I showed you how to find the constraint by using the quadrant. But now, they're just telling us cotangent of theta has to be less than 0. So let's go and take a look at, if we were going to deal with the coordinate point, what does the cotangent represent? Well, remember, the cotangent of theta represents the ratio of your coordinate points of x over y. So let's look at, in each quadrant, what do the x and y coordinates look like? Well, in the first quadrant, the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is positive. In the second quadrant, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive. Third quadrant, we have the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is negative. And therefore, in the fourth quadrant, we have, um, in the fourth quadrant, we have the x coordinate is positive and the y coordinate is negative. All right? So therefore, what we need to look at is determine when is the cotangent theta less than 0. So the cotangent would be less than 0 is when, when we're obviously going to have a negative, um, a negative value. So cotangent is negative in, let's see, cotangent is going to be negative in the second quadrant, and it'll also be negative in the fourth quadrant. So it's going to be either in one of these two quadrants. But then it said, remember the sign, so that is the y value over the hypotenuse. Or we said the opposite over the hypotenuse. But for coordinate points, we sometimes we also represent it as y over r, where it's the y coordinate over r. Well, since y is positive, our opposite side has to be positive, we know that our we're, we have to use the second quadrant because in the fourth quadrant, y is negative. We know that our y is positive. But it has to be where cotangent is negative, and that's either in the second or the fourth quadrant. So therefore, my triangle has to look like this. I know that y, the opposite side of my theta, is 1, which is the y coordinate, and r is 4. But in this second quadrant, my x is negative, therefore making cotangent negative. So therefore, to figure out this value, I have to use Pythagorean theorem, which says 1 squared plus your other leg squared equals c squared, or your hypotenuse squared. So therefore, if I have 1 plus b squared equals 16. Subtract 1 on both sides. I have b squared equals 15. Square root both sides. And I have b equals the square root of 15. However, since we're dealing with the second quadrant, that's going to be the negative square root of 15. Now they ask us to evaluate all six trigonometric functions. So first thing I'm going to do is do the sine function. Remember the sine function from theta, here's my right angle, is going to be the opposite side of theta over your hypotenuse, which is directly across from the 9 degrees. Therefore, I'll have 1 over 4. Let's go and do the cosecant, which is the reciprocal of that, which will be 4 over 1, which is equal to 4. Now let's go and do the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse. So it would be the square root of negative 15, or negative square root of negative 15 over negative square root of 15 over 4. And then the secant, which is the reciprocal of that, is going to be 4 over negative square root of 15. Now, we can't have the radical on the bottom, so I'm kind of losing space here. I'm going to rationalize the denominator, which will just leave me with 4 square root of 15 over 15. And that's, of course, negative. I'll show you how to um, rationalize the denominator here with tangent. So a tangent of theta, that's going to be opposite over adjacent. So therefore, I have 1 over negative square root of 15. To rationalize the denominator, you multiply by the square root of 15 on the top and the bottom. Therefore, I'm left with the square root of 15 negative over 15. And the cotangent, my last one, is just going to be the reciprocal of that, which would be the square root of negative 15 over 1, which is equal to the negative square root of 15. 
So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you evaluate your six trigonometric functions. Thanks.